U.S. Senator Dan Sullivan joining us now via satellite from Washington, D.C. Senator, I want to thank you for taking some time out of your Friday to chat with us. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, James. Great to be, great to be with you. Thanks. If we could, we'll get right to it. Let's, let's uh, touch on Jay Bear. Uh, the announcement made today that Jay Bear will stay at full oh, yeah. force. Uh, the Army previously announced cuts to the 425 two years ago. Why the reversal now? Yeah. Well, look, it's, a, it's great news, and it's official news. Uh, it's great news for Anchorage. It's great news for Alaska. And it's, uh, in my view, great news for the national security of the United States. The 425 is the only brigade combat team in the entire airborne brigade combat team in the entire Asia Pacific and the only Arctic trained airborne brigade combat team. And as the threats and challenges in the Asia Pacific and the Arctic have increased, um, it made sense. And, you know, my team and I, we, we worked uh, relentlessly on this issue trying to convince senior members of the Department of Defense, uh, senior members of the uh, U.S. Army, including even putting holds on confirmations of senior leadership to convince them that this was a strategically misguided decision and that they needed to reverse it. And I'm very pleased uh, about the announcement today. And I do want to do a shout out to the men and women of the 425 and their families. You know, they did a great job. I, I got to know a lot of them. I went to some of their training, even outside the state. Such a, such a forceful, well-trained unit. Um, they made the case how important they were to the national security of our nation. And you know who else made the case, James, is uh, Alaska communities, um, Anchorage and other communities. There are no better and stronger supporters of the U.S. military and our troops than Alaskans. So um, it's an important day for Alaska, for the country, and, you know, also a serious day, not only because... 425 staying fully intact, all 5,000 men and women and their families, but also it was announced that they're going to deploy to Afghanistan. So we certainly want to wish them Godspeed when that deployment happens. Let them know we're proud of them. We got their back. But um, it's a really important day for what's going on in the state and the country. We'll touch on their deployment in just a second. Is this official that they will be staying? I had, had read somewhere that it's dependent on uh, the proper appropriations being received from Congress. Does something else still have to happen? Well, they mentioned that, and uh, we're confident of that appropriation. You know, they always say that, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that they also mentioned in the release was uh, in all the advocacy that we had been doing, one of the things that I uh, pushed hard on with some of my colleagues in last year's defense authorization bill was actually up the end strength of the Army. Um, with all due respect to the Obama administration, they cut our military too dramatically. And so last year's defense authorization bill, which was signed by President Obama in December, uh, increases the end strength for the Army. And that was also important, allowing the Army some breathing room to say, hey, we know this unit is critical for a whole bunch of reasons, super well trained. The strategic reserve for any problems on the Korean Peninsula, and now we have the end strength to keep them in Alaska. So those are all the things. We'll keep an eye on it, uh, certainly, but right now it's looking very strong and an official announcement uh, from the Army that they're here to stay in Alaska. And we briefly just touched on it. 1,500 soldiers from the 425 will be deploying to Afghanistan. Do you know what they'll be doing there, why they were chosen? You know, I talked to General Milley, the chief of staff of the Army, yesterday. I was at a Wounded Warrior uh, event at the White House, and he was there. And we talked about it. Um, you know, I don't have the, the timing uh, of the deployment, uh, but it's safe to say when units uh, do deployments like this, they get fully plussed up in terms of personnel, in terms of training, in terms of equipment. So from my perspective, I'm going to make sure that when they do deploy, they are top uh, top of the line in terms of their training, in terms of all their gear, and uh, be ready to go to defend themselves, defend our nation. And of course, we want to wish them and their families Godspeed, right? Our men and women sacrifice for us all the time, still are, and the 425 has a long tradition of doing that already with multiple deployments under its belt, and it's going to have another one here soon. We don't have a lot of time left in our window, but we wanted to ask you about Syria and the president's decision for airstrikes on that Syrian airfield. 
uh, after the Assad regime was said to have used uh, chemical, uh, chemical weapons on civilians. Uh, you're standing by the president's decision? Absolutely. I commend the president, his national security team, and most importantly, the men and women in our military who carried out this response, which was uh, intended to degrade and diminish Assad's capability to conduct additional chemical attacks against his own people, which he did uh, uh, numerous times now, uh, and also degrade his ability to conduct chemical attacks against our allies in the region. You know, Israel's very close to Syria, of course. And so I commend the president. Just got briefed by the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff on this. And um, now we got to look at diplomatic opportunities to further isolate Syria, Iran, and uh, some of the pariah states out there that don't share our interests. All right, Senator Sullivan joining us from D.C. via satellite. Thank you again for your time.